In this video I want to tell something about how to change a waveform. Um, that is in all kinds of circumstances important. Uh, when you drive a transistor for instance on its base, it's showed here, NPN transistor, when you drive it on its base, the waveform that you put in the base here is very important to the current that you find here, the type of current that you find here in this part of the circuit, and here is always the load. That could be everything, transformer, a lamp, whatever, doesn't matter much. Another resistor from which you take the signal here again, and the same applies to a field effect transistor. When you uh, drive the gate with a certain waveform, you will always find the, the, that waveform here, the voltage here in the waveform, back in uh, the current, the type of current that flows from the drain to the source. So, for small um, uh, example, when you drive for instance a transistor with such a waveform, with extreme peaks, you'll find it back here in the way the current moves here. And when you have, for instance, an inductance here, you'll also find back these big peaks here in um, uh, certain types of currents. And that can only be studied with the oscilloscope. So to reach the optimum effect uh, to drive a transistor from the collector to the emitter, through the load. It has a lot to do with the waveform. And I've made some simple uh, circuits in real, consisting of a resistor and a capacitor. And I studied how the waveform changes when we put in here a certain uh, type of signal, a square wave. And what do we find here? So in this circuit here, when we put in a square wave, we find here a triangle wave. This is the circuit in real. This is the resistor. This is the yellow uh, thing. Is the 100 uh, nanofarad capacitor connection to the scope, and here the connection to the signal tracer. This is the sound from the signal. This is the waveform at the moment. And here we see that when we put a square wave in, in this circuit, this circuit, we get a triangle wave out. And I have to say for all these circuits here that I'm going to show, the amplitude depends a lot on the practical situation and it's also important to know that the whole circuit depends on the input impedance and the output impedance. So when this is connected to a high uh, input stage, high uh, resistance input stage like a field effect transistor, you'll find that the waveform can change slightly uh, due to, the, to that high impedance. But the principles are good and are reliable, so that's what this video is about. Um, and also important is that the frequency where it all works and where the, uh, the change of the waveform takes place also is very important. This here and this one is in fact a filter that has the best properties within a certain frequency band. And that also uh, applies to this circuit and this circuit with a coil and again this circuit. And uh, that's why I noted here, make, made some notes that um, for instance you find here in this circuit that it changes into a triangle wave but only in the frequency band between 800 hertz and 8 kilohertz. And here you see a triangle wave that changes into a, a sine wave 
but also in this frequency band 1.3 kHz up to 9 kHz and also the sine wave is not perfect, it's imperfect but that has to do with optimization from the circuit. This is only a demo circuit. Ok, back to the reality. This is the triangle wave. Put on a light. Triangle wave. Input is here. Uh, a square wave here. Put in a square wave. Take out a triangle wave. Now I put in a triangle wave to the same circuit. And this is what happens. Put. You can see that the triangle wave uh, changes into a sine wave. And that's the next circuit from this demo video. Triangle wave in, sine wave out. This is also useful for instance uh, when you want to make, make music circuits. Uh, the sound color uh, completely differs uh, between the triangle wave, the square wave and the sine wave. Though the triangle wave and the sine wave sound a little bit the same. It sounds a little bit sharper, a triangle wave. And this is a sine wave, but I want to demonstrate now that it doesn't wor work good on all the frequencies. So I'm going to raise the frequency now. You can see that the amplitude changes dramatically. That's also important to know. Now I go to a very high frequency. The uh, amplitude changes dramatically. I have to get much more imp amplification on my scope. But it still looks a little bit like a sine wave. So that's a good result that this circuit also works on higher frequencies. But when you want to use it in real and you need the same amplitude at the output, you have to amplify the, the signal. Um, I can demonstrate now uh, the next circuit. This circuit with a coil. With a coil you will find the next, uh, f uh, the following phenomenon. Uh, square wave in and this frequency, this, this, this uh, waveform out is very high peaks but only on low frequencies and that depends of course completely on the way the filter is constructed. There's only inductance from this coil. This is the coil that I've used. It's a transformer uh, 230 volts to let's say 10 volts or so, I use the primary here and the primary coil has a DC resistance from 500 ohms. So when you find the same transformer you will find the same waveform here. And in all cases you have to set the potentiometer to a certain value. So uh, these are experimental circuits uh, with which you can find out uh, a certain uh, way to drive a transistor or make a typical sound. But I was explaining this circuit. Um, this is the waveform at 1.3 kilohertz from this circuit. So you have to say that when we go to the higher frequencies with this combination in the filter, the waveform uh, goes back again to its ground form, its ground wave. And that's uh, square wave. And here we have more or less the same triangle wave in, sine wave out, with this transformer, exactly the same transformer I've used. And um, at 110 Hz it looks a little bit like a sine wave, but at 1.3 kHz um, we find back uh, the basic wave that we have put in into the filter. So these are also filter circuits with sound effects. But I think the, the better application is to change a waveform to 
certain state and drive the transistor with that waveform. And important then is that this waveform, for instance, has a much higher energy content. And that the reason is that this, in fact, is a switch. Uh, uh, on, off. So here, this surface is very big and there's a longer term and more energy content in this waveform compared to the uh, triangle wave or the sine wave. And it also has consequences when you drive a transistor. You switch it completely on and off when you drive a transistor with a square wave. So it was all a little bit theoretical. Sorry. But when you do experiments in this field, you can find it all out. And uh, I think it's necessary to do some experiments to find out how this all works in practice.